to stop. Jared. Well, I mean, I was, was in touch with PS and I all day yesterday. I think the difficulty is that there was uh, a facilitator period. It's not the first one. We've argued this out now for months. This goes right back to the beginning of December. And uh, the short strand, there should have been a policing operation which would make sure they knew that there was something like 600 uh, people coming across here. They knew of the sectarian abuse the short strand took before. They should have had a, 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 an operation in situ which made sure that the type of type of attacks right behind us where uh, houses were attacked should not have happened. I mean, it's as straightforward as that. It's ABC policing. It's not as if there was no uh, warning of what was going to happen here. And that's the type of discussion I had with the PSNI yesterday and will continue to have it. We can't have this fear that's within uh, small uh, areas like the Short Strand uh, continuing on. Uh, the police did not cause this problem. But the police have a duty to make sure that small, vulnerable areas do not be attacked. And uh, they knew that this was going to happen. We have now had experience, never mind the years of experience, even from the beginning of December. They should have known, I would argue, they had to know that this was a potential and they should have protected the people before, not after, but before the attacks took place. Mr Adams, do you have any view of the role of the two uh, governments during this crisis? Have been sufficiently involved, or were they right to perhaps uh, keep a distance and leave it to local parties? Well, I'm, I have been critical of, of this Irish government, but this Irish government is no different from the Irish government which preceded it. And uh, we, we do our best to brief and to keep informed on all of these uh, uh, developments. And, and essentially, what the governments have a responsibility to do is to uphold the rights of citizens. So, of course. The Belfast City Councillors have the right to take the decision they took. And of course people have the right to peacefully and democratically protest uh, against that. But this would not be tolerated in London and this would not be tolerated in Dublin. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have a situation allowed to uh, work itself up to what happened here uh, yesterday afternoon. So we welcome the fact that the Tanishta is going to be here meeting with the First and Deputy First uh, Minister. Sinn Féin will be meeting tomorrow morning to review uh, all of this as as well and this is about upholding the rights of people what the Good Friday Agreement is about if it's about nothing else is about parity of esteem and equality and I want to come back to the point that I've been making fairly consistently what's happening here does not represent the will or the sense or the intention or the hopes of the vast 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 majority of Belfast people vast majority of Belfast people, despite the difficulties we've come through, despite the conflict, and maybe in many ways because of it, want to live in peace with their neighbours and want to live in a shared city. And that's what we have to uh, bring about. What, what those who are involved in fomenting this disorder is about stopping the peace process and stopping that from emerging. Your own councillors on Belfast City Council, and there's one of them here beside you, wanted to take down the Union Jack completely. They wanted no Union flag, that was their motion. The leader of your own party on Belfast City Council said the reason they went along with the compromise was it was a tactical decision. In Limavady, your own councillors support a situation where on no designated day is a Union flag let fly. You come from a tradition, you say, where majority rule was the problem. Are you not part of that culture nowadays? And would you, in any circumstances, allow the union flag decision by Belfast City Council to be revisited? Well, well, first of all, the position which we have articulated, and I think it's a very, very uh, sensible position, is equality or neutrality. Both flags. I'm an Irish nationalist. I'm an Irish person. I resent the fact that the union flag flies above me and it used to fly above every single public building in this city. Our folks go into Stormont and go into the City Hall despite the fact that the Union flag flies above us. Now, <coughs> Unionists uh, obviously have an affection for the flag, so that's fair enough. We have an affection for the Irish national flag, the tricolour. If the Unionists are not prepared to allow both flags to fly, and are not prepared to countenance no flag flying, then we went for the compromise put forward by the Alliance Party. And this is not uh, trying to uh, rob unionism of their unionist symbols. This is about trying to recognise that there are unionists and there are nationalists and there are people who are neither unionist or nationalists and they want to get on with their lives in a way which reflects the diversity of our society.
We were here yesterday. We saw people from the, this estate here firing stones at people as they were passing. I was here on several nights and we were told to F off with their cameras. Would you condemn people who did that as well? Well, no, I would not. And you I'll tell you... You condemn people who fired stones? No, no, hold on. I'll tell, I, I, would, I will condemn... I will condemn anyone who engages in violence. But the people that I was speaking to this morning, and you obviously haven't had the benefit of speaking no. to them, and per perhaps, perhaps people are also distrustful of the media. One, one man said to me that he's outraged, not just by the way his home was attacked, but also by the way it was portrayed in sections of the media, as if he in some way was a, a, a protagonist in all of this. What we were told by the people that we dealt with and talked to this morning is that they came out of their homes after they were attacked. Our, our stewards in the area, and we unfortunately were led to believe that the, the protesters were coming by another route. So we were in another part of the uh, district and had to rush as rumours spread throughout the district of there being attacks on, on homes. So wanton violence, uh, a, a, a tax or use of violence for any purpose, yes, that is to be condemned. But people coming out to defend their homes and their children. And the house, one of the houses we were in was a very elderly woman who's experienced this for the last 50 or 60 years. We don't condemn that. Of course we don't. And of course, okay. Tommy, it's important to remember that RTE were here, uh, as were numerous Sinn Féin elected representatives and residents, and RTE didn't interview them. They had the opportunity. Russian TV, Middle Eastern TV were here and had, took the time to speak to residents, speak to elected representatives, and RTE chose not to take well, that when opportunity. You weren't here and the that's other, it. When you weren't here the other night, when you weren't here... Well, I was here, somebody Tommy, from, somebody and from I'm accessible. Street came out to us and told us to F off. Well, you, can you understand their frustration? Uh, that was Have on Wednesday. Have you reported accurately what's happened? That, that was on Wednesday. Well, Tommy, this has gone on for five or six weeks. Tommy refused to interview people in this community. Yes, five or six weeks. You, Tommy, this has gone on. refused to interview people in this community. Mr. Adams, yes, I just want to make another point here, if I may. Just let's bear this in mind. I'm not from the short